Hey, what's going on? It's your boy BT, and I came here to talk some boxing with the thousands of True School Sports subscribers. Now, where it's my brethren out there in East LA. Shout out to East LA. And speaking of East LA, speaking of LA in general, we're going to talk about Sinisa Estrada. We're going to talk about Marlena Sparza. Yes, and for those of you who may or may not like it, especially the ones who may not like it, we are going to talk some women's boxing because we cover boxing as a whole on this channel. So, Wanted to make this video because if you guys remember back in, I'm going to say, May or June, somewhere towards the middle of this year, I made a video about how Marlena Sparza and Tanisa Estrada should fight each other in the future. Because Marlena Sparza went and did an interview with KO Artist Sports on YouTube. And she was basically just going off about how, like, you know, following her, it was following her pro debut where she where she went where, where she got her first win. She goes off about Sinisa Estrada and because they fight in the same weight class, and she goes off about, about how Sinisa Estrada isn't that good, and how Sinisa Estrada is, is not on her level, and how Sinisa Estrada um, did all this stuff in the amateurs, lied on her name, did all this stuff, and just I said, I said a lot of hate, a lot of pride, a lot of arrogance from Marlena Sparza. That's just what I got, and I was thinking to myself, man, like. Cause now that the year is ending, I was like, BT, you know, what's what are some what are some fights that should happen in 2018? So I started thinking about, you know, obviously I thought about the the, the big fight that we all think we all know, you know, uh, like uh, you know, GG GGG versus Canelo, you know, Wilder, Joshua. That those were obvious. But then I, I started thinking of fights that were a little outside the box. So then I started thinking about women's boxing because you know a lot of people don't think about women's boxing, but I thought about, about women's boxing, and I was like, you know what? Like, Sinisa Estrada and Marlena Esparza makes so much sense to happen on Cinco de Mayo on the undercard of Canelo versus uh, Triple G. It makes so much sense because Sinisa is, Mex is, is Mexican. Marlena is Mexican. They're fighting on Mexican Independence Day. You know, they're fighting on a it, – it, it, a big card. You know, it makes all the sense of the world for that fight to be on that card. You know, um, Marlene's a Golden Boy fight, fighter. Sinisa has uh, worked a Golden Boy in the past. So I know there would be no, um, how I say, how, there, there would be no political, you know, things that would t tie up um, this fight from not happening. And it's a fight that I think it should happen, should happen because this is a, this is one of the fights that that women's boxing needs because of the simple fact that like when you, when you one one of my issues with women's boxing is like there's talented fighters but sometimes in certain weight classes the most talented fighters don't have a true opposition or and there's no big fights there's no meaningful fights there's no I don't want to say grudge matches but yeah grudge matches there's no grudge matches or fights where the one opponent doesn't like the other per, the other person that much it's just like it, it lacks it lacks that in women's boxing at times and I think this wouldn't lack that because. I know Marlene doesn't like Sinisa, and I know that even though Sinisa hasn't really publicly commented on it, just seeing how she's dealt with or not dealt with Marlene on Instagram, I know she doesn't like uh, Marlene either, but she's handled it very well. So I want to see the fight happen, I think it should happen on the undercard. Whether it be televised or not, I don't know, but I think it should be. Um, as for the fight, you know, I'm, I'll make it no secret, man. We've had four fights to digest Marlene Esparza since the, I last made a video in May, and I think Sinisa would ice Marlene Esparza. I'm talking about, I'm not just talking about like B. I'm talking about ice Marlene Esparza. Um, I'm going to tell you why too, because and I, I'm not speaking as someone who just like, you know, looks at their Instagram pictures and don't doesn't watch their fights. I watched both of their fights. I watched them both fight extensively. Um, Sinisa, for one, has had the much more quality opposition. Now, granted, you know, if you go look at her box record, she really hasn't fought a whole lot of uh, fighters are great, great records, and you'll see that oftentimes, especially women's boxing, that these girls ain't really, they really ain't fighting the uh, girls with like you know great records. But she did beat a notable name. She beat Nancy Franco. Nancy Franco was a former world champion. You know, Nancy Franco, uh, decent fighter, and and she schooled she schooled Nancy Franco. I was I was, I was actually at that fight. Uh, Nancy Franco doesn't have a great record, you know, um, but she was a, a, a former world champion at one point in time. Um, she held the IBF female uh, minimum weight belt. So uh, good win. And she's school Nancy Franco. And like she's got some other, you know, she got, she got, she has a better experience. So that's number one. Number two, Sinisa has actually challenged herself in her um, actual like career. Uh, she, for those of you who don't know, Sinisa Estrada campaigns at 112 pounds. And there's been multiple times in her career, I'm going to say at least two, two, maybe three times where she's fought at a higher weight class. And she's, I'm, I'm talking about, she's, she's schooled these girls, like school them, destroyed them. And 
the fact that she she's she's fought higher weights and won, and you know had dealt with adversity with with with, with not fighting at a natural weight class, like that's a plus. So to fight someone like Melina Sparza who um, can't punch her way out of a paper a white paper bag, you know, I'm just telling you, like it bodes well for Sinista. Um, and overall, I just think like when you watch Melina fight, you know she's a, she has a, she has the traditional prototype like amateur style, you know, jab jab jab, score points score points, which is good. And so a lot of women's fighters can get away with that because there really ain't a whole lot of like power punching women's fighters. To be honest with you, but I wouldn't be like don't if you look at Steve Sasada's box, she only has like an eighteen percent KO percentage, but a lot of that is due to the fact that she's fought at higher weights many many times in her career. She can punch. She can crack. She knows how to get leverage on her shots. And Marlena Sparza, like, they have two common opponents. And if you go look, like, Marlena Sparza and Sinisa Stratton have two common opponents. Like, uh, Marlene fought uh, Rachel Sassoff in a pro debut, who, by the way, if you go watch that fight, guys, it was, like, bruh, like, shambolic. Rachel Sassoff was, like, a converted, like, UFC, MMA reject. And she came to boxing and... She really didn't look, look like a fighter. Like she looked more like a kid than a fighter, to be honest with you. And then she went four rounds with Rachel Sassoff. To go watch the fight, Rachel Sassoff, go watch the fight. To go four rounds with that caliber of fighter, let, let, let me all I know about uh, Molina Esparza. Sinisa Estrada, like literally three months after she fought Rachel Sassoff, stopped Rachel Sassoff in like 38 seconds. 38 seconds, like just killing her. Um... And she was the only, by the way, Sinise was the only fighter to two stop Rachel Sassoff. So, no small, um, I mean, it's an accomplishment. It's, it's, but she did better get Marlene against her. And then, um, yeah, just, and her style too. Like, if you watch Sinise fight, like, she fights a lot. Like, I, I love the way she fights because she has, if, you, if you're if you a hardcore fight fan, she has this kind of style that a hardcore fight fan will appreciate. Like, she has one of them styles where, I, I for me, she's a hybrid. Like, her style is somewhere in the middle of between, like, a Roy Jones Jr. And a Juan Manuel Marquez. She has the creativity and the imagination, and uh, in some in some some instances, the speed of a Roy Jones Jr. at times. But she, it's more controlled and it's more uh, how I should say, like tactical uh, than than Roy Jones was. Roy Jones was tactical, but I mean, when I say tactical, I mean like when she's doing her like pivots and shoulder movements and throwing hooks from out here. It's it's all calculated, and she's she she has a. She can come forward and fight, but she has a she tries to set you up for counter punches like a woman woman Marquez, which is why I say like she's in the middle between both of them. And I know that like Roy was a was a big influence of hers. Roy co-signed her, so you know that she's got to be a pretty damn good fighter. Roy's out here co-signing her, and um, yeah, man, I just think it's a good, first of all, I think it's a good fight not just for women's boxing, but boxing in general. I think it's a fight that 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 would be really good, and I think it's a fight that needs to happen because Marlene talked a lot of trash. Like, and I, I I'm speaking as someone who. Be honest with you, like before I saw her pro debut, I didn't know who the hell Marlene Esparza was. I didn't. I just, I, maybe I heard the name once or twice, but I didn't know who she was. I just saw, I think I might have saw her in the ESPN Body Magazine, I'm floating around on Instagram or Google Images. But other than that, I didn't know who she was. So I watched the fight, and she really was. She really has didn't impress me. She fought recently, didn't get a chance to watch her fight. But I heard uh, the girl she fought was like they went to war, like basically. So she's not. Suited for the pro game, in my opinion. I, I don't think her style is as suited for the pro game as Sinisa Estrada. So that's why I think Sinisa would win. And I think Sinisa is a better fighter than her. Um, and that's what it is, man. Like, I, I want to see it. I think it's a fight that should happen. I think it's a fight where, you know, um, if, like, if, if, like Golden, Boy, Golden Boy Promotions, my opinion, and I, I, I said this on Instagram too in a recent post, like Golden Boy Promotions, I think when they signed a Mexican female fighter, they signed the wrong one in Marlena Esparza. Like, she's good and she has some good things going for her. But as far as the, the one who could really be a – who could transcend the sport and be a, a star of any sorts, it's Anissa. For one, not 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 to, like, be superficial, but she looks better than Marlene. She's more entertaining fight-wise than Marlene. Um, she comes off as a lot nicer than Marlene. Like, I haven't even met Marlene, so maybe one day it will happen. But she comes off as nicer than Marlene. Uh, she's not as arrogant as Marlene as far as I like. It's just like it makes more. And she's from East Los Angeles. She's the freaking Mexican woman's boxer undefeated from freaking East Los Angeles. Why didn't Golden Boy sign her? Like, then I'm probably going to do a video about that as well. Like, so that's just my opinion on the matter. But this is a fight that should happen on the Gennady Golovkin Canelo undercard. The fact that they're going to fight on Cinco de Mayo, it makes all the sense in the world. And if anybody from Golden Boy happens to stumble upon this video, 
I'm just saying, your boy BT, I'm trying to play matchmaker here, trying to help the fans of boxing, trying to get back to the sport. Um, but let me know what you guys think. For those of you guys who know about these fighters, if you know about Marlene Spars, if you know about Tanisha Strap, if you watch both of them fight, who do you think would win and why? Um, for me, it's a no-brainer, Tanisha Estrada. But let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Take the time to subscribe. Follow True School Sports on Instagram at True School Sports. There's some great things going on over there, so go get over there and uh, be a part of that community. And, um, yeah, man, God bless you guys. You know, take care as always. And like I say in every video, man, like, my name is Brendan Taylor, and you can love me or you can hate me, but I'm just a kid from Dania. And that's Dania in South Florida, if you didn't know. So until next time, take care, guys.